Hello, friends. Welcome to Emmanuel Cares, a podcast of Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Shirley, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Dave Rudat. This is the sermon from Laverne Zerbel's funeral entitled, I Am Is Your Shield and Your Great Reward. Let's join the worshipers on Laverne Zemer's funeral on February 3rd, her birthday, 2023. What a beautiful gift uh, that you are giving Laverne on her 95th birthday to be gathered around God's word and to hear his comfort, to hear his promises of the resurrection, and to, give his, to get his strength from his word as we go through life. God's word from Laverne Zerbel's confirmation verse, Genesis chapter 15, beginning at verse 1, where the Lord says, I am your shield, your very great reward. Dear family and friends of Laverne Zerbo, if you come to worship here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Shirley from Sunday to Sunday, you know that I am known for typos. There's always going to be one typo in every bulletin I'm my own secretary. I fire my secretary every week. I have to rehire him on Monday. So you're looking at the sermon theme for today, and you say, I am is? Really, Pastor? Don't you know your grammar? I am is your great, is your shield and your great reward? Let me tell you the story of Genesis chapter 15 and how it relates to your loved one who had this as her confirmation verse. It had been a close call for Abram. Abraham had left his family and gone to an unknown land with his nephew Lot, and Lot had been carried off by some kings. Abram was was. Not sure what to do. He's in a strange land. He gathers up his forces, goes and gets his nephew back. He comes back. What do you think? You think the danger's over for Abram? Now here's his great welcome to this land that his nephew gets carried off, and now is this going to happen again? And God comes to him in a vision. The Lord comes to him in a vision. The I am God comes to Abram in a vision and says to him, I am your shield, your very great reward. Shield we can understand, a defense mechanism. Abram, you're still surrounded by danger, but you have me to be your shield who will protect you and your very great reward. We might look at that reward aspect and think, well, what about now? And the Hebrew behind reward has more than just a reward in the future, but right now God is going to provide for Abram. So when it, the promise that God is giving to Abram is that I will protect you and I will provide for you, I will give you, I will make it worth your while in the end too. I am your shield, your very great reward. When Laverne Zerbo recite, or whatever her maiden name was, I'm sorry. When she, what? Pouts. When she said that at her confirmation day, that this was her confirmation verse, when that was said over her, that promise that God gave her that he would be her shield and her great reward still stuck. Who knows all of the danger that she faced throughout her life? And then, toward the end, losing her mind. 
having battling memory, not knowing where she was or when she was. I am your shield, your very great reward. God kept his promise. Even when he asked her to go through that great evil, losing her mind. I'm sure if God were to ask us to give up something, that would not be on the top of our list. We might say, God, if you want me to give up Starbucks in order to be your follower, I think I can handle that. Or if you ask me to give up technology, it'd be rough, but I think I could do it. But what if, for whatever reason, perhaps so that you would be strong and be focused on him, God allows a great trial to happen to your life, would you volunteer? Perhaps it is God giving Satan's hell a little bit worse when Satan is accusing God and saying, your way, you're not being fair. God says, look at my servant Laverne. You can take away everything from her and she will still be faithful to me. We don't know why God allowed her to have such a long memory loss, a long time not knowing where she was or when she was. What if God asked that of us? Would we volunteer? I don't think we would. And I think God knows that. Our God is big enough to take care of each one of us, to look out for us individually, to make those hard choices a parent, every parent must make so that our eternal Situation is never in jeopardy. As Jesus says, anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We don't like the idea of sacrifice, not at least the idea that the way that Jesus talks about it. We would give our life for our country or our Lord, but if it's a one time gift, if it's a gift we can give standing up, we could do that, but A long-term gift? Where it means from one day to the next we won't remember where we are or when we are? God asked a long-term gift from Laverne. And she went along with it. Yeah, we have to recognize that no sacrifice we make for God can really truly impress him. God is holy. He demands the same from humanity. Jesus himself says in Matthew 6, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. God makes it abundantly clear in his word that we can never live up to this perfect standard. No matter how hard we try, we're still under the same sentence that Paul writes about in Romans 3. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All fall short. No one measures up. No one has sacrificed enough for God. We are all sinful. Laverne is, was sinful. We must confront this fact. Maybe we've never murdered anyone. Maybe we've never shoplifted. Maybe we are fine, upstanding, and respected citizens in the eyes of those around us, but God is able to see everything about us. He sees everything that's on the inside. He looks into our hearts. He knows what's going on there. He hears our hateful words, our hateful thoughts. He's watching. He knows. God makes that declaration, all humanity, all humanity is sinful, so therefore they've earned this wage, this reward, as Paul writes in Romans 6, the wages of sin is death. And not just temporal death, but eternal death. Without God's intervention, his justice would wait until we die and then exact from us more death, eternal death. We owed a debt that we could never pay. And even an eternity of suffering could not appease a 
holy and perfect God. But God chose to act not according to his justice, but according to his great mercy. His son, out of divine love for us, took on our human nature, took our place under God's wrath. He suffered on the cross, endured not just the agony of the crucifixion, but the wrath God has for you and I, for our sins. But on the third day, on the third day, Jesus rose again. Death was not the end for him. It was conquered. The Bible tells us that Jesus conquered death. He took away its finality, took away its eternal sentence. His resurrection assures us that death is but a shadow. Yeah, it's traumatic when a loved one dies, but it's a shadow. A shadow of a knife cannot kill. A shadow of a snake cannot bite. So death has lost its sting. Death has lost its sting for Laverne too. She closed her eyes in death, but her Savior was still with her. She opened her eyes in heaven and awaits the great resurrection when her beautiful mind will be reunited with her beautiful body. And the great reward that God promised to her will finally come to fruition. I've known Laverne for six years, and when I first got here, I'd always introduce myself as I'm the new pastor at Emmanuel and Shirley, because if I said I was the pastor, that would confuse her. She'd be like, no, you're not my pastor. Um, so I'd always say I'm the new pastor, so I, do, I was the new pastor for a couple of years. And then I would say, I'm from Emmanuel and Shirley, and she, beautifully she would always say, oh, I know that. I'm from Emmanuel and Shirley. Yeah. Sometimes I would just ask her, can I talk to you about Jesus? And she never once said no. Now, I've been around long enough that I've gone to people's bedsides in the nursing homes, and I've said, can I talk to you about Jesus? And they would have nothing to do with me. For a while there, Laverne could say the creed with me and say the Lord's Prayer with me. She never once turned me down. When I could talk to her about Jesus and the room that he has preparing for her in heaven. The Lord, the I am God, is her shield, was her shield, and her very great reward. She had the comfort that God was always with her. This promise that God made to Abram, the promise that God made to Laverne, is the promise he makes to us as well. I am your shield, given to you in word and sacrament. Take advantage of building up your faith. Perhaps you'll be asked to give up something or to demonstrate that God's way is right. Perhaps God is going to ask you to give up something to demonstrate that his reward is better than anything here. We don't know what evil awaits us. Wouldn't we want to have the defense against whatever comes? Wouldn't we want to have a shield that is always with us? Who's always going to provide, not just forever, but now, that great reward, that great wage, the one who's going to be with us always to the very end of the age? I mentioned before, when a loved one dies who struggles with memory, the family is sad. One of the sadnesses you deal with, I'm sure of, is they missed out on your life. They didn't get a chance to witness with you the joys of marriages and children being born, of achievements at work. But your God wants you to share those things with them. And there's only one way. It's through Jesus and his word and sacrament. He's your shield. 
He's your great reward. He'll provide through word and sacrament to keep you faithful, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus so that one day you can have that conversation with your loved one and share all the beautiful things that happen in this life. All because your Jesus, the great I am, is your shield who protects and your great reward who provides. No matter what comes, he's there for you. Amen.